Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And for this week's podcast roundtable, we've got the great fisherman and cyclist himself, the big papa, Tate Litchfield. Tate, how are you? Doing well. Happy to be on the show again. Yeah. Um, how, are, how are you doing post boot camp? Really good. I'm Monday, yesterday, I went, uh, went fishing up in uh, Mosquito Lagoon. So I had a great day out on the water. Got to see a ton of wildlife. Didn't get eaten by a gator. Scott was just telling us that gators are everywhere in Florida. I don't know why you'd want to live there. It seems like have, it's terrible. Uh, it, it really does seem terrible. I have no idea why anybody would live there. But uh, Eric Peterson from Nashville, landopia.com. Eric, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks. How was the drive back? You drove 10 hours, man. I did. And you know what? I finished Ready Player One on my way home. So, I mean, that was awesome. How, how depressed were you after it was over? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Don't ruin it. Don't ruin it. Don't no, 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 we won't talk about the no, ending. No, no spoilers. No spoilers. <laughs> Eric, like, it is depressing. Like, it, you get to the end, you're like, it's over? Yeah, exactly. It's like, okay. oh, I still got a couple hours of driving left. What am I going to do? <laughs> when, when I got to that key moment, I actually went back to the beginning of that chapter to like, I, I'm like, I can't get enough of it. I got to go back and listen to it just one more time. <laughs> Love that. Book. Yeah. Yeah. It was good. Yeah. It was uh, long, but, but really good. Yeah. It's, it's so good. It's so good. And then of course, you know him, you love him. Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com. And most importantly, you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott Todd, how are you? I'm great, Mark. How are you? I'm great. Did you know today's podcast is sponsored by tlfolio.com, the largest that. note <laughs> exchange platform in the world? <laughs> well, for land, for land. For right? land. For land, land notes. For yeah. land notes. Land notes. Land notes. Go get some money. Go sell your note. Just 12 months, you'll be amazed. You can get your capital back out of it. Go do more. Why wouldn't you? I, don't, I have no idea why people wouldn't do it. But we'll see. Uh, all right. So we've got some good topics for today's roundtable. The first one is the boot camp magic. Now, I, I say this every single boot camp, and it happens every single boot camp. Somebody in that room every single time closes a deal in real time at boot camp. We're not sure why this happens, but it's magical. So Tate, you wanted to talk about one of the stories there? Yeah. Let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about Mimi. And I mean, everybody loves Mimi, first of all, but her deal was just magical. First of all, she's in Florida and she's visiting from somewhere on the East Coast. Virginia. Uh, Virginia, right? And she posted an ad, I believe on Facebook. And that ad produced one sale and a couple of really solid leads. Okay. Two weeks later, if I'm not mistaken, I might have my timeline a little bit off Mimi. Sorry about that. But she gets a phone call from one of the persons who was interested in her original property that she was selling. And she told me, yeah, that's gone, but I've got another one available. And the guy was like, great, tell me more about it. Long story short, the guy comes, meets her in Orlando, and gives her a big old wad of cash. How awesome is that? I mean, you can't beat that. She's in Orlando for the boot camp. She has to take off early on Friday to go meet a guy, get a big old wad of cash, and then go to her bank and deposit it all. I mean, that, if that's not boot camp magic, I don't know what it is. It, it, was, it was so magical. And then she comes back. She's like, he wants to spend 30000 in cash with me. So he gave her 6,000 cash, but he wants to spend 30 and he's like, find me some more properties. She's like, okay. So that was magical. Then how about Tom Willis? He came from another, he's been to like eight boot camps. He comes out I'm like, Tom, how are things going? He's like, I did 130,000 last month, but my best month. I'm like, what's your passive? He's like, I'm at 12,000 a month. This guy's got a full-time job. He's doing it part-time. The boot camp magic has finally kicked in for Tom Willis. This guy's never missed. I mean, yeah, he did, he did go into coaching, but you know, he hasn't been in coaching now for what, six months? Yeah. And he's just crushing it. That was magical. Uh, Charles Glover closed his first deal at boot camp. No, he didn't close one deal, Mark. 
He closed three. He closed that three guy, deals? Yeah, he messaged me this morning. Charles got him on the phone and the guy was like, yeah, I like to buy the property that nobody wants. And Charles was like, well, that's interesting because uh, I've got two more lots in that same area where you just bought land. And he's like, I'll take them. The yeah, guy sold, I mean, he went from one, one sale to three in a matter of minutes. Why? Because he asked, hey, are you interested in more land? Yeah, sure. Tell me what you got. I mean, magical, man. Magical. magical. You know what I think happens, Mark? Here's what I think happens. I think that it's, you can call it magical, but I think what happens is you gain a sense of confidence when you're there, right? Like when you go to boot camp and you're learning this stuff and then you start to see other people doing deals and, you know, all of a sudden this, this magic that you didn't have or this confidence that you didn't have just magically appears and boom, Next thing you know, you're putting out into the universe like, hey, I'm open for business. And all of a sudden, here come the customers. Yeah, Eric Peterson, what about you? What's your, what's your theory on why these things happen at boot camp? I don't know. I, I don't have a theory about it. I, you know, I, as boot camp approaches, I'm always like, all right, am I going to you know, sell a property, this boot camp, and it never happens for me, <laughs> but, uh, but that's all right. You know, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm thrilled that other people are, are making sales, especially when they're making their first sale. I mean, that's, that's the best, right? So, um, you know, I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, they say it's the first hard, the first million is the hardest to make. And so is getting your first sale. Right. And then yeah. it's just kind of like, okay, this, this works and your confidence goes sky high and you just rinse and repeat. But it is, it is that first sale going full cycle that I think is the toughest for, for most people. Eric, was your first sale the toughest? Yeah, I mean, of course. I mean, there was always so many unknowns along the way. I mean, the whole system, uh, you know, you kind of just, as you go, you learn new pieces and, so when you're making that first sale, it's, it's all new, you know, uh, you're just learning how to put together your contracts, how to prepare your deeds and, and all these other elements, how to collect the money and so on and so forth. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a big hurdle to overcome, but it's, it's doable. And then once you've done it, yeah, it's just rinse and repeat, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's, I think it's, you know, the fact that we're in the room and they can get those, you know, those questions answered in the room also, uh, I think helps with the confidence too. Like, oh my gosh, you know, here's, you know, cumulatively, you know, 10,000 deals in the room or something, you know, crazy between all of us or at least, well, at least, I don't know, 7,000 deals. I don't know the numbers, but I've done 5,500 deals. Um, and I think just being able to ask that one or two, you know, that one question or two questions, like gives you that, that confidence. But, um, you know, here, here were some of the, the reviews on, uh, on Facebook, uh, help lift some of the land investing clouds. Thanks. Um, let's see if you want to change your legacy, you must contact Mark to find out why this program is so powerful. The program is a direct result of his 16 years of experience. He's done it. Now he teaches us how. Honesty as the day is long. Mark, all caps, way over delivers. His team is the best. Thanks, Scott, Mike Z, and all the others that contribute so much. I am grateful. Uh, boot camp is a must for new land investors and seasoned ones alike. Mark makes seemingly complex processes and concepts easy to grasp and gives off the enthusiasm needed to drive you forward. Is boot camp a good use of your time? No, it's a great use of your time. Uh, here's the last one I'll, I'll, I'll say. Mark is a wealth of information with a lot of energy and wit that makes learning incredibly fun. He goes above and beyond time and time again, delivering the highest value imaginable. I highly recommend jumping on the Land Geek bandwagon. My only wish is that I had heard of the Land Geek sooner. So, you know, we get rave reviews from boot camp, but I think what we provide at boot camp is that feeling of, you know, that deep dive into the investor's toolkit um, and that feeling like, hey, look, at the end of the day, we're not, 
you know, uh, rocket scientists, right? Like if we can do it, you can do it. And it makes it so real. So um, for those of you that have the toolkit and have invested in flight school, to not come to boot camp, I think is a huge, huge mistake. Would you agree, Tate? Yeah, I mean, you know, I've been to, I don't even know how many boot camps right now, but every time I come home and I'm motivated, I'm hungry. It's, uh, and I learn something every single time. I don't care if you're as smart as Scott Todd, you will learn something at every boot camp. Yeah, I mean, I learned something from every boot camp. Uh, what about you, Eric? Yeah, I love coming to boot camps. It, there's there's always something new to be learned and, you know, to take home and apply to your business. Yeah, so for those of you that want to register for the next one in San Antonio, just go to landgeek.com forward slash boot camp to learn more. Let's move on to the next topic, which, we, you know, we heard a lot at, at boot camp was hiring VAs. And first of all, we, we saw a lot of resistance to hiring VAs. And we also saw and fear of hiring VAs. We also saw when do you hire your first VA and what position do you put them in at first? We found a lot of, um, uh, it wasn't real clear to, to doing that. So Eric Peterson, let's just start with your story first. At what point in your business did you hire your first VA and what did you have them do? Um, well, I think like a lot of people, um, when I got to that point where I was just tired of doing a certain aspect of the business is when I decided it's time to figure out how to find a way to get this done outside of myself. Um, and as I look back, I think it was probably um, different pieces of due diligence for me. Um, I hated gathering GPS corner coordinates um, and creating the maps. So I remember that was one of the first things I started making screencasts for is, you know, this is how I want this done and et cetera, et cetera. And, um, you know, I, I got some VAs started on that early on. Um, and then, you know, kind of grew from there, learned how that worked and, and just continued to add more tasks and refine things along the way. And um, that's how it worked for me. Tate, how about for you? You know, my first VA was, uh, I believe my due diligence VA. I hated that part of the business. And, and that's kind of the general rule of thumb that we apply is when it starts to get painful, when that job makes you want to quit, that's when you know it's time to start outsourcing it. And I was sick and tired of wasting my day waiting on hold. And so when I found that when I finally gained enough confidence to outsource this to somebody else and let them spend their time on hold, it was, it was liberating. I can't even describe to you how good it felt to get that off my plate. And since then, it's been pretty much every other aspect of the business. As soon as it becomes painful, boom, somebody else can take it over. And I'm okay with that. Awesome. Awesome. Scott Todd, how about you? I mean, my very first piece was in scrubbing the list, right? Because what, what I was doing was I was uh, screen scraping everything. So I was working in an accounting where I had the, you know, the tax delinquents on one screen. I'd go look up the, the parcel number and I was cutting and pasting, cutting and pasting, cutting and pasting. And that really blows people away because when I tell people that story, they're like, wait a minute, that's you were actually cutting and pasting stuff. And I'm like, yeah, it makes no sense. Does it? Because as much as we talk today about like all this automation, all this stuff that we did, that's not where it started. It started off with literally cutting and pasting screen scraping data from a website, county website into Excel to mail merge. And I did it for 21 days straight. My wife thought I was crazy. Every day I'm sitting there like printing out these offer letters. She's over watching TV, you know, with, with the kids, whatever. Here I am at the, the, at, in, in, at the desk at the time, like cut, paste, cut, paste, cut, paste. And she's like, what are you doing? I'm like, there's money here. I know it. She's like, yeah, okay. And so then I got to the point where I could not take it any longer. So then I, uh, I got a VA from the Philippines. I created a video of what I wanted them to do. I gave them a test. I gave them the work that I just did. I gave them an hour of work that I just did in the, in the example. And I looked at the quality. I was like, good enough. Let's roll. I gave them up to three hours a week and they were getting me 130 names a week. Bam, problem solved, right? Amazing. 
Amazing. Um, question. When, or I should say when, because we kind of discussed that. Whom, who, what, what function of the business should you hire last? And what do you see as, as a problem with, with most people? They want to jump what aspect first and outsource first. We're like, ooh, don't do that first. Eric, what do you think? I think most people want to outsource sales first. I mean, even for me early on, I wanted to do that. Um, But to this day, I haven't. And the reason is, I mean, it's the most important part of your business. Um, On top of that, um, you've got to be doing enough volume that you can support a salesperson and keep them um, driven to, to continue to sell for you. So um, not only do you need to have a big inventory, you got to have steady sales so that they can count on their, their income. So, um, you know, it's, it's probably the sales part is probably the piece of the business that most people are the least comfortable in. Um, that certainly that was myself early on. Um, but it is something that, uh, is probably the last to let go in my opinion. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, Tate, what about you? Yeah, I, I mean, I, that's the first thing people want to get rid of. And is sales. I think it's the last thing that, yeah, sales yeah. and finding an acquisition. Well, they want to find a sales manager, right? They want somebody to do the hard part. They want somebody to follow up with the people, send the emails, deal with the tire kickers. And, the reality is we're selling a very unique asset, right? It's selling land is not the same thing as selling computer software or selling a vehicle, right? It takes a knowledge and a background. And so you've got to spend a lot of time with that person before you let them go. And like Eric said, if you're not doing the volume, then why would they, you know, why would they want to come work for you if you're selling two or three properties a month? It's just not enough. And that person isn't going to have a lot of skin in the game. So, you know, to make them motivated, I mean, they're going to be motivated by one thing and that's money. Right. And if they're not making good money, they're gone. Right. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Scott, Tao, what's been your experience? I mean, people love to, the thought of outsourcing sales. Why? Because they don't, they don't like the sale. People, most people don't like to sell. It's outside their comfort zone. And you know, what I'll hear oftentimes is, Oh, I'm too busy to sell. Well, at the end of the day, like the sales, we're not talking about a lot of sales, right? We're, we're, not, we're talking about like one, two sales a week when you get going. You know, even if you're going to do, you know, 200 sales a week, that's not even four a week. Now, you got to talk to a lot of people to get there, right? It's not like it's a one for one ratio. However, uh, you got to follow up, et cetera, all that stuff. However, as, as was just said, you know, if, if you think that you're going to hire sales because you don't like it or that you think that it's just going to show up. It's not, you see what, what's going to make a salesperson want to work for you. What's going to make the sales happen for you is the marketing. And a lot of people just don't like the marketing piece either. They don't like to write ads. They're they're like, man, that's a lot of ads I have to write. Well, yeah, it takes a lot more ads than what you think. Uh, It's not like we put an ad out there, one ad and all the buyers come running. That's not the way that it is. Right. Right. You know, what I, th- what it really upsets me is, you know, I don't like when people want to outsource sales, but when they first get in to the business, they want to outsource county research and to let an, a VA pick your county and do that research, I think is a huge fatal mistake for a variety of reasons. The number one reason being you should be educated on that county and know definitively why this is a good county and then know the pricing, know the comps, know the county, uh, you know, assessor, recorder, treasurer, planning and zoning, and really be clear on why you're going into that county. Because if you don't get that county research right from day one, the whole rest of the business goes off the rails. Would you agree, Eric? Yeah. Yeah, completely. I've, I've seen it happen. Um, you know, whether that's people taking... Counties from 
you know, outside of the secret list or, or just kind of willy nilly picking counties based on, you know, whatever criteria they feel like. Um, yeah. Yeah. Tate, how, how often in your coaching calls do you like, whoa, 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 we're not giving up the county research. You know, this is one of those things that I don't think county research ever ends. I think you always are researching and part of being a good investor is keeping an eye on what's going on in the industry. What's going on with the market. If all of a sudden we start to see a shift or a huge demand in a new area. Well, before I go dump a bunch of money there, I'm going to know what my research tells me. So I've developed a, a strict set of guidelines that help me determine whether or not I want to spend my hard earned money there. And if the County doesn't fit my requirements, I'm not interested. So in coaching, I notice that, you know, I think that a lot of our, our, our students are better prepared for this, but it is something that you do have to spend a lot of time. And those people that, that don't treat County re research with a lot of respect end up having to go back to it time and time again. Yeah, Scott, Todd, what about you? What are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I think that, uh, I, I mean, like, what what amazes me sometimes though is that people will also like pick the county um, when they go to county research they'll pick the the, the just turn to the secret county list right and they look at this list which like you've you've narrowed it down to what like two hundred I don't know one hundred and eighty something counties yeah I mean these are like the counties 3, that I've done deals in uh, my students have done deals in or my competition have done deals in that's it but Not it doesn't mean it doesn't mean that it necessarily is the hottest county right now, right? Like it just Absolutely. says that. Absolutely, yeah. And so you got to do a little bit of thinking, right? Like we always say, like, where are the other land investors? And people are afraid of competition. I mean, we, I can't remember who said it, but recently someone said, oh man, should I, I was worried, should I start off at the front of the list or the back of the list? They, they were trying to think through the logic. Well, the list is a great place to start, but guess what? It's not the end all be all. You have to go do a little bit more research to figure out where the deals are happening. And if you're going to outsource that to a VA from the get go, well, then they're just going to execute. And then you're, then you've got the blind leading the blind, which is a, a recipe for disaster. Right. Right. And for our coaching clients, uh, we are taking new, uh, 10 new clients, by the way, in vas.thelangic.com and uh, really helping save you tons and tons of time on hiring and training your own VAs. Um, are we ready to move on to tips of the week? Yeah. Oh, I'm so excited about my tip of the week. Are you really? Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm lukewarm on my tip, but I but think wait, it's going to be cool. What about, weren't we going to talk about inviting people to send in their tip of the week? Remember? That's dinner? right. That's right. Uh, I, Danielle is going to put in the next uh, newsletter Send in your tips of the week to us. And we're going to evaluate them. And we'll evaluate them. And, and if, you're, <laughs> if we pick your tip of the week, we're going to give you something cool. Oh, I love that idea. Like we get, uh, what, what, we get like three and we all get to like look at it and say, I like this one. Yeah, we're yeah. going to do like the pros and cons on them. And it's like, like the shark. It's like, it is truly like the geek take, right? Exactly. It's the geek take tip of the week. And the thing is like, I'll get, the, I'll get all the tips first. And then I'll no, divvy them no, up no, to no, Tate no. and Scott and Mike. <laughs> and then whatever's left will go to Team Eric. Oh, that's Naturally. crap. Which is totally oh, fair, man. It makes sense. It seems They can just send them directly to me. <laughs> oh, yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, go ahead and edit that out. With, uh, yeah, so. <laughs> no worries. So, all right. Let's, let's, let's start with uh, Eric. What's your tip of the week? All right. So, um, my tip of the week actually comes from uh, the previous boot camp in Scottsdale. Um, you know, uh, Tate was talking to us about um, our buyers lists and um, just how important headlines were. And uh, he suggested that uh, we start basically a swipe file of headlines. And um, one of the best places to to get those headlines is to look at the um, email marketing that, that comes to your own personal mailbox, whether that's for clothing sites or, you know, um, we all get tons of junk mail, right? So just actually reading those headlines and saying, oh, wait a minute, that one caught my eye. You know, what was it about it? And copying and pasting it into a document. Um, so 
ever since Tate talked about that, I've got this kind of ongoing Google Doc and I just, I keep pasting those headlines in and, um, you know, it's, it's actually been very useful. And um, so I'm kind of taking Tate's tip and uh, bringing it back, but uh, it was a good one. I love it. Great. That's a great tip. That's a great tip. I think it's um, fantastic. That is a fantastic tip, Eric. It's excellent. Yeah. Tate, what's your tip of the week? All right. I'm a little nervous on this one, but I got to share it because it's good. If, okay. if I were Eric and Eric was sharing this, I mean, this, he'd probably get uninvited from the podcast, but it's a good tip. So it's called Scannable. You guys heard of it? You used it yet? Scannable? Uh-oh. Basically... <laughs> I know I can see Scott. Is it is it an app? Yeah, it's an app. It's called Scannable. Okay. It's very similar to like TurboScan, but it's linked directly with Evernote. So you can scan a document right from your phone and upload it to Evernote. Now, I don't use it personally, but I came across it and I was like, you know what? The community needs to know about this. If somebody's a diehard Evernote fan out there, this is a good way to get those documents into one place immediately. So Check it out, Evernote, or check it out. It's called Scannable. It's pretty simple, easy to use. Link it up with your uh, Evernote documents and you're good to go. Is it called Evernote Scannable or just Scannable? Because there's Evernote Scannable that's got five stars and like 1.9 thousand. Yeah, that's it. I mean, it's it's quality. All right. I'm going to download it. But TurboScan also, I mean, it's one other step, but you can't upload it to Evernote. Exactly. And that's, I mean, I like TurboScan. Oh, there, but, there you get it. Yeah. Yeah, but it, this one's linked directly to Evernote, so it's one less step, one less process. All right, Scott, bring it. I know you got it. What look at Scott. Say? Look at Scott. Sm- know, Scott's you, got like a crocodile smile right now. I I just you're right. I think that if t- if uh, Eric had had brought this up, he'd never be invited to the podcast. That's how lame it is. It That's is a lame. But it's I mean, lame, right? Like, I guess, I guess that's how you defuse a, uh, how you yeah. defuse a, a tip of the week by saying, okay, this is lame, but I'm going to say it anyway. That's how you do it, Eric. You say like, just, just preface everything. Like, this is lame. And if I was Tate, I'd be thrown off the podcast, but <laughs> what kind of crap is that, man? It's honest. It's honest. Okay. I mean, I, I like, uh, Scott, I, I have to tell you, I, I like, of the course app. you do. Of and course you the like review, it. They, it has better reviews and it's free. Yeah. Then, uh, yeah, but it's got a it, jot, not pro, which uh, costs money. Yeah. And which turbo scan. Terrible. Look, here's the deal. Here's the deal. The deal is that it only, only, only integrates to Evernote. So it's within their ecosystem, which are I like. Sh- are you sure it only ever integrates with Evernote? Oh, and is that I, such a bad thing to integrate with Evernote? Yeah, because I can't give that to like someone selling me their land or something in which they can go and download this app, scan back the deed to me because it's going to go into their draw to their Evernote and they don't even have Evernote probably. You can send it. You can send it. Like I'm looking at it right now. You can email from it. You can You're breaking share. up. You're breaking up. Oh, right Yeah. I'm this is a done for you. This is awesome. My my tip just got even better. Well, now you just some, never now you get a good idea. Magic on it. Never oh, a good yeah. idea to go against TurboScan. Yeah, it's not good. Well, idea. I mean, I, I, this might We've be better than TurboScan. I'm, I'm going to check it out. It's good. I'm telling you guys, it's it's a really good app. You're we gave like Jot Not Pro its due. It, we just thought it was not good as good as TurboScan. I don't think we gave it anything, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't. We didn't give it to. <laughs> no. There's nothing wrong with Jotnot Pro. There's no. There really isn't anything wrong with Jotnot Pro. Um, Today's podcast is sponsored by Jotnot Pro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm downloading it right now. Okay, Good. Scott, what's your tip of the week? All right, Mark. Tate. Where do you where do you like to get your pictures from for your land? Uh, Google Earth, uh, other land investors' websites primarily. Yeah, like Eric's. mine. Yeah, like I mine. love. Your okay, website. so look, here's what I'm gonna do, Don't Mark. Check my pictures, check, <laughs> Eric. Eric, here's what we're doing, man. Check out this Mac Store app called Photo uh, Balk Editor. Photo Balk Editor dot com. 
And in the app store, it's called Photo Balk, like B-U-L-K. And what happens is you bring in the pictures, you drop in the pictures, and instantly it slams on a watermark. So bam, Tate can't go and steal your pictures. I don't like this tip. That's genius. <laughs> Eric, is that not genius or what? Look at yeah, it. That's, that's nice. This is stunning. Stunning <laughs> graphics. Stunning visual experience for everyone. Where is this? I'm oh, just going to have Mark. to get... See, I, was still, is, I was still playing Mark's with still Scannable, playing which with is Scannable. beautiful, by the way. Mark, Mark, Mark. Yeah, I'm going to make it easy. Tate, it's better than Turbo. It is. Oh, I mean, it's, it's, that's crap. It, that's it really crap. is, and it's free. Photo it does ball. the exact same thing as TurboScan, but it's more beautiful. And it's this, okay. this is more Mac-like, and TurboScan is more, you know, Windows-like. Okay. Mark, photobalkeditor.com. Check it out. Oh, that's very cool. Absolutely stunning visual experience everyone's been waiting for. Oh, this is nice. This is cool, isn't it? This way, I'm going to stop everybody from stealing. Like, you can put in your logo on the watermark, the oh, date. This is nice. I'm stopping all photo thefts you're today. Just, you're just gonna oh. make it. My pictures are just gonna be really weird size now because I'm not when to, it like, goes right across the center it. tape. Right this across. Is great. The center. I'm gonna have Download to download on the Mac App Store, and it's in, it's in the Mac App Store. I love $10, it. Ten dollars, man. Ten dollars to not get ripped off by other people. I, I'm gonna find a way to to get those to not show up on my website, but when you steal my photo, then it shows up. Oh, that's oh, good. Oh, oh that's, that's good. Cool. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really that's cool. cool. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. All right, well, my, my tip of the week, all right, you guys are going to haze me, I know. But after my horrible jet lag from flying to Orlando, losing three hours, and then coming back home from Orlando and gaining three hours, my sleep was all messed up. Um, it took like a day to recover. And I thought, well, wouldn't it be nice if I just knew the best time to wake up in my, my sleep cycles, because let's face it, sleep is so, so important to our health. Right. And, uh, so I found this little free site. You hear that Scott, not 10 bucks free sleepy tie. So sleepy and then T I dot me sleepy tie dot me. Check it out. And it's really easy. You just plug in what time you're going to go to bed and it'll tell you exactly well, what time you're going to wake up. It'll tell you exactly what time to go to bed based on a sleep cycle. And this way you should only use your alarm sort of as a backup. Whoa, 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 whoa. I just did it. It's telling me if I want to wake up at 6 a.m., I either need to go to bed at 9 p.m. or 1030 or midnight or 130 in the morning. Exactly. So it didn't do me anything. It just gave me four options on when to go to bed. It, that's exactly. If you now you need to go, you need to be asleep at those times. And remember, it takes the average person fourteen minutes to fall asleep. So that way, you're going to wake up based on the sleep rhythms. What time is best for you to wake up? What time is best for you to get go to bed? So you're not you're not waking up at the in the middle of a sleep rhythm. Uh, this is lame. <laughs> Scott Todd, uh, I really lame. I, I mean, like, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm like, I got nothing, man. Are you telling me this has absolutely no value whatsoever? No, no, it's, it's okay. So it's tell like I said, okay, I got to wake up at six 30. Why? Because my kids, I got to wake up at six 30 for my kids. Right. right. So but you need to know what okay. time to go to bed to get up. Okay. At no, 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 so but see, it doesn't even tell me what time to go to bed. It yeah, doesn't even tell me. It tells me you need to fall asleep at nine 30. Yeah. Okay. Well shit. What if I fall asleep at nine 29 or nine 31? I'm out. I'm out, man. I, th th I mean, there's gotta be some wiggle room in there. Mark, no. it says the average <laughs> person no takes 14 minutes. Well, God, man, what if I fall asleep in six? Holy crap, I'm going to be off cycle. It's going to create a lot of stress when it's bedtime. Right. Like, I got to go to bed right now. I got to sleep. I got to sleep. I got to sleep. Gotta... Scott, you got four options oh there. You got four options, man. Okay. So, listen, Put here's on, the deal. Start watching your show till noon. Till, I mean, till midnight. <laughs> okay. Okay. And so then here's fall what we asleep at 1144. But then I'll be out of whack. No, you won't. It's giving you all these options. When 
Whatever. Okay, here, Aaron let me Peterson's give you an example. So, so if I don't, if, if, I'm, if I'm not asleep by 9.30 p.m., Correct. then I have asleep to- Asleep at Asleep. So, I, so like if I, I'm like, okay, I, I blew through it because I'm doing flight school. I blow through that one. Then 11 o'clock. So let's say that 11 o'clock comes and I'm like just winding up flight school or something. And I'm like, God, dog it. I'm not. A, so I'm going to go to bed. I'm going to shut my eyes. I'm going to go. I got to sleep. I got to sleep. I got to sleep. Then at 11 o'clock, I look at the clock and I'm like, I got like 50 seconds to sleep. 1101. I now have to wake up and stay up until 12:30. My wife is going to kill me. Okay. And if <laughs> I, I, I miss the 12:30, I think you're overthinking over it because you got four options. Well, if I if I were you, I'd read a book till your next sleep cycle instead why of going not, right to bed. Why not do what normal people do and just go to bed when they're tired? <laughs> I mean, right. I mean, oh, I, well, normal. Is, I'll tell you what normal people have a problem with is waking up because they're not feeling refreshed. Well, that's because they stay and, up too late. And only the land geek cares about that. No, this is a cop hey, out. Tate, really, clearly, Tate, you check, guys Tate, are not Tate. in touch. Tate, check this out. Check this how, out. How nice, Tate, to be able to just wake up whenever you want. Oh, uh, when, honey, go watch I the baby. Be, I'm going to go on a two-hour uh, bike uh, Tate, ride. Tate, I Tate, feel when great. You, Tate, listen, man. When you get the results here, like it tells me 9, 30, 11, 12, 30, or 2 a.m., on the very, very bottom after the ad – Okay, uh-huh. like after the, uh, uh, in very smaller, it says, if you don't know when you'll fall asleep, but uh, I'm sorry, if it says, if you know when you'll fall asleep, but not when you're going to wake up, try this one. So there's a little link that says sleepy tie.me forward slash wake. And it says, I plan to fall asleep at, okay, okay. I plan to fall asleep at 1135 p.m. And that means I'm going to wake up either at 1 a.m., 5.30 a.m., 7 a.m., or 8.30. I just blew through my 6, 6.30 wake-up call, man. I'm done. I'm in trouble. So don't fall asleep early either. I think what Mark is trying to get us to do is just not sleep, right? That's what he's trying to do. <laughs> don't sleep. Just do mail. More. Just mark it. Do just more deals. Get your M&Ms out. Do more deals. Just, I, you know what? Just I want you to wake up. Week. I want you to wake up refreshed as opposed to groggy. Now, the three of you are so spoiled that it doesn't even matter now. Like, oh, I'm just going to wake up whenever I want because I have no boss. But real people, <laughs> normal people, actually have to be somewhere at a certain time, right? They've got to get up and they got to feel refreshed and they got to go on with their jobs. I'm trying to help those people. You three are the worst of the of the group. To have so much freedom and so much flexibility and to scoff at feeling refreshed and alert. Good for you. Good for you. <laughs> this gets a double I think we talked now. about this. I get up at five every day. How do you feel when you get up at five? What time do you go to bed? You're probably yeah. already doing it. I go to bed technology? around 1030, but I don't have to worry about going to bed at 1030 exactly. Maybe you should. We just get close enough. Maybe you should because you'll feel better. I'm just Wait wondering minute, why, Eric, you, Eric, according to this app, it says you should be in bed at 8, 9.30, or 11. So you're clearly going to bed yeah. at the wrong time. Yeah, I'm all out of whack. But and look at the I'm bags in his eyes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Fatigued. Just go to bed at 11, Eric. Oh. You'll feel so much better. My, my, my. All right. I want to thank all the listeners for putting up with our nonsense. <laughs> and just to remind everybody, today's podcast is sponsored by tlfolio.com. And uh, look, the only way that we're going to be able to continue doing these nonsensical podcasts every week is if you do us three little favors. You got you to gotta subscribe, you got to rate, and get a review of the podcast. Send us a screenshot of your review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit and if you even state in the review mark clearly has the best tips of the week every single week thank you mark for that we might even send you a starbucks gift card so please do so or something Um, far worse what's far worse (laughs) this tip this This last tip tip, oh yeah another (laughs) tip you know what you guys give me no respect because who gave you five tips last week you know that was awesome but we I had the week off. Be, that, was, that was nice. I thought it was going to be the standard. I thought you were setting the bar like, oh, from now on, I'm going to have five tips. You are the land geek. 
whatever. All right, let, let's let's do this. One, two, three. Let, let freedom, freedom ring. ring. And get a good night's sleep. And get a good night's sleep, of course. Use technology to, to figure out when you need to go to sleep now because you're not right, think, grown ups. Check out the everybody. Sleep Cycle app. <laughs> you know, there's, you know what? There are a ton of sleep cycle apps. I think you guys are really underestimating the huge market for this. Must People are not, not getting a good night's job sleep. Not sleep. <laughs> it's true. You know, you know what? We mock. We mock what we don't understand. I was for sure you were going to talk about a mattress. Oh, go out and buy this mattress because uh, that might be next. You know what? That might be next week. And we could talk about, you know, like Ori when he sold his company, he bought a forty thousand dollar mattress, a a, uh, a Hassan's mattress with like real horse hair. And he's like, Mark, the best investment I've ever made. Think about it. What else do you spend the majority, a third of your life? in bed forty thousand dollars very good investment I'm like dude really you could have bought something else for, i mean like what's wrong with like a two thousand dollar mattress oh no oh no not good human horse horse human hair. horse people hair? spend yes yeah, people spend a lot of money on these houses <laughs> mattresses you can, you can get like a low-end one for like 10 grand jeez i don't think he meant that with tape yeah. what human horse hair you know, it's, he, it's look up Hassan's mattress. Well, you just told me it's human horse hair. It is. Really it is. How is it human <laughs> horse hair? I've never heard of a human horse. How do you spell it? I don't even look. Is it H A A S? That's the kind of horse that's half man, half horse. Yeah. yeah. Has, okay. H A S T E N S mattress. It must be Wayne Newton hair. It, it, you know what? That'd be even better. Hassan's beds of Sweden, fulfilling dreams since 1852. Look at this. Mad forty nine thousand five hundred flow beds. Wow. Horsehair wool latex. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, we know Scott Todd's next purchase. No, no, I'm not buying this thing. No. Would way. you? Would you ever spend that kind of money on a mattress? Absolutely not, man. Ten thousand. No. Here's here, I, here's from Thrillist. I slept in a twenty seven thousand five hundred Hassan's. 2000 T bed for a month. Let's see what they say. That's what I'm reading right now. It says. Uh, I found myself getting visibly excited to go to bed. It became an <laughs> event, an activity worth celebration, celebrating an occasion. Well, that's, that's pretty nice. Wow. It looks really nice. I'm going to wake up feeling fantastic. I don't know. Well, look at but this way. Have you ever met an unhappy Swedish person? They always seem very uh, happy about their chocolate and life. And I mean, I think Sweden's got like one of the ha- like one of the like happiest places on earth. It could be the mattress. It looks nice. All right, we've huh. digressed big time this week. We, we really have, but this is nice. I wonder if that's tax deductible, Mark. Well, with our new uh, CPA, I bet it would be. If you put it in your office, maybe. Maybe, yeah. Oh, power uh, naps. Power naps. So, <laughs> all right, I'm, I'm going to go eat lunch. All I'm right. Gonna go, I'm going to get some sushi. Tate, what are you getting? I am going to Chipotle. I'm meeting a friend. Nice. Eric, what are you doing? I already ate. What'd you eat? Just a sandwich. From Nothing Panera? fancy. No, just from <laughs> downstairs. <laughs> nice. Can we... Well, before we go, we got to give Scott his credit. At the very end of the podcast, let's just say. Oh, no, no. No one's listening to this. Say, I want to I start the next one by opening up with the apology. You know, next I, one I, I should. I should. It gets the whole deal. Didn't, wait, didn't we the apologize last, like last quarter? Didn't we do that? No, you apologized last year after you made the same mistake. So we have to keep apologizing now. Every time you come to Orlando, it's an ongoing apology. Yeah. So the apology. I'm not going to apologize for the then. Panera Bread la- jokes. Oh, that was that was cold though. When the guy at the end's like, "Hey, man, did you go to Panera today?" What? I'm not going to apologize, but I'm going to send a note. I'm just going to write it, write my apology. Yeah, Written Scott was apology. you. You were three for four over three the weekend. Three for four. But I thought the, you said the, the last, last one the now. last lunch before. No, we you said the, the last one. That, no, 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 no. <laughs> you said you said the, the last one doesn't count, and you also said that it was the company, not necessarily the food. So. I don't want to hear it. Fine, I agree. I, uh, it's fine. Yeah, yeah I'm just, know. I'm just so upset about the sleepy time 
Yeah, go 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 look yeah. for a sleep app. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah.